After years of living in small spaces and helping clients optimize their small homes, these are the tips and tricks that I think are the most helpful in making your small space look and feel bigger. The first one is to not have a ton of clutter. For smaller areas, I find it especially true that the more little things you have, the more chaotic a room can feel. And it can be that chaos that makes the space feel even smaller. So instead, keep it clutter free. This extends to having less furniture, decor, trinkets, kitchen gadgets, and all those things that tend to take over an area. For smaller items, my rule of thumb is that I avoid items that are smaller than my fist. Not only do those tend to look more cluttery, but they also tend to require more dusting. If you do have a lot of things that you love and you want to fill your home with, one solution is to congregate your clutter. Instead of keeping all the little things spread out across the home, move it to the same location. If you have a collection of special things, instead of spreading them across every nook and cranny, you can relocate them so that they're all together. Instead of appearing as a lot of little things, it'll start to look like one beautiful thing. Number two is more of a mindset approach, but I promise it will affect how you feel in your space. And that's to be extremely intentional with everything in your home. If you surround yourself with what you love, you're going to feel happier in your home. If you make yourself sacrifice every single thing just because you're living tiny, you'll eventually end up feeling resentful. I love eating healthy and while it makes absolutely no sense to have a giant juicer taking up the small space in my already tiny kitchen, maintaining a healthy lifestyle is something that makes me happier in my home. Having a pet in a small space is something that can really be rough, especially when it's a cat and they need a litter box and cat tunnels and all the things. Having Izzy here with us is something that makes me feel like I'm home. I do like to use small space friendly pet accessories so that it makes better use of our 269 square feet. And the sponsor of the video today just happens to make some awesome pet accessories that are perfect for living in small spaces. It's important to me that Izzy is drinking enough water, especially being on her kibble diet. I like having the pet water fountains because she drinks a lot more water, which is where the sponsor of today's video comes in. Pet Libro. They are the genius ones who created a cordless water fountain for your pet. Because we're not limited by where the nearest electrical outlet is, I can actually put her fountain where she enjoys to drink water most. We call this her morning drink and think. She likes to look outside the window, see what's going on, see the birds, and drink her water at the same time. And you're also not going to run the risk of the danger that you would get from the traditional plug-in fountains. I also love how easy it is to clean this one because it's so functional and so easy to clean and take apart. It just makes my life easier in a small space. And this fountain makes absolutely no noise, which is just perfect for living in a tiny space. Another great thing is an automatic pet food feeder where we don't have to get up and feed her in the morning. It takes care of that for us. So we're happier, we can sleep, and she's happier because she's getting fed on time. This is also Pet Libro's new automatic pet food feeder. What's great about the automatic pet food feeder is that we're able to select the perfect amount of food for Izzy. Most importantly, our um, very cute kitty loves to eat as fast as she can and then loves to vomit that food all over the house. But having the automatic pet food feeder is awesome because we get to stagger her portion so she has to eat slower. Since we've done that, she hasn't vomited once. The bonus of this one is that it has a triple protection design. She can't stick her paw up there and sneak out any kibble. She can't press the buttons because this one has a pet proof cover over it. You can store up to two weeks of kibble and the, the top button is just one click to lock so you don't have to worry about the food spilling or it getting moldy. The rotor structure inside is precise so if you have problems with pests in your home it prevents them from getting in. And there's a 180 day battery life feature as well. If you want to upgrade to some small space friendly pet accessories you can click on the link in the description box and you can use our code suitcase15 with pet libro to get an additional 15% off your order. Next is to optimize the lighting. If you've ever lived in a small space without windows you'll know how truly claustrophobic it can feel. If you've got natural lighting, use it. Keep your windows open when you can, but if you don't have good natural lighting, there are other ways to optimize the lighting as well. One is by using mirrors to reflect lighting in dark corners or walls, which is a great way to help a space appear larger. You could use a standing mirror, or if you don't have floor space for that, you can also opt for using Velcro strips with lighter weight mirrors, and you could stick those on your walls. Another way of optimizing the lighting is by optimizing your color choices. What I like to do in my 
truly small spaces is to use white bedding. I've tried to use colored pattern prints before in my small spaces. Sometimes it works, but most often it just tends to kind of dull out the rest of the light throughout the room. Another critical lighting essential for me is to use layered lighting. This might mean using under cabinet lights, table lights, or anything other than the harsh overhead lighting. Not only will this create small shifts in the mood throughout the day as you turn off one and turn on the other, but it can also serve as a way to create zones within your space. Next up is to avoid open storage just requires more maintenance and it tends to be a clutter magnet. Especially in a small space, if you walk into a room with open storage, your eyes will naturally gravitate toward that area and it can magically shrink the size of your space very quickly. So instead, I like to opt for closed storage when I can. Next is to draw your eye upward and there are many different ways that you can do this. When we first arrived, the baseboards were white, which made them much more noticeable, which in a small space translates to making the link between the floor and the ceiling very noticeable. To solve the problem, I blended the baseboards so that they matched the walls and we painted the crown molding and the ceiling a bright white. The result was that your eyes no longer took notice of the white baseboards and instead it felt as if the room grew a foot taller. Another way to do this is with your curtains or your blinds. For curtains, try to hang them as close to the ceiling as you can and make the curtains as long as you can. You can also think of this in terms of where you hang something. So for small spaces, I like to hang photos, towel hooks, and shower curtain rods a little higher than where you would think they naturally go. This helps it give it that naturally lifted look. There are endless ways that you can achieve this in your space by simply reworking the decor pieces and the furniture that you already have. Next up is to lengthen your space. Avoid placing rugs or furniture in any way that will make your room feel choppy. If you're living in a truly small space, most of the time, I stay clear of rugs altogether because they tend to make the room look choppy. If you want to use them, go for a big rug that extends across the width of your room as much as possible. For furniture, placement when possible, try to place your furniture in a way that opens up the room rather than breaks it up. Next up is to allow for breathing room. Oftentimes when you have a small space, you think that pushing everything against the wall or into the corners is going to make it feel bigger, but it doesn't always work like that. When you can, avoid placing your bed in the corner, even if that means you can only create a narrow path on one side, I promise you, just try it. I also like to do this when it comes to walls. Just because you have walls doesn't mean that every single inch of it needs to be covered with something. In this living room makeover, when you first walked in, every wall was filled with a print and gave a sort of claustrophobic effect. But these were all pieces that they loved and they wanted to keep. So what we did was give most of the walls some room to breathe and instead I took their collection of prints. We put those all on one wall to create a gallery wall that really made a statement. It's not that you have to eliminate what you love, it's just being smart about how you place it. Next is to avoid small space furniture. Don't fall for it. The furniture that says it's designed for small spaces is not only super uncomfortable, but it's going to make your small space look much smaller. I would much rather prefer having less furniture in my space and with the furniture that I do have, I want it to be full size. I love Ikea Soderham sofa for small spaces because you can choose to not have armrest on it, which will help eliminate some of that choppiness that we previously mentioned. And it doubles as a twin bed whenever you have a guest sleeping over. At the end of the day, there are limits to how big you can make your small space feel, but just remember remember less is more. The more stuff you fill your house with, the smaller it's going to feel. Less is also more when it comes to prints, patterns, pillows, textures, layers. When you incorporate too many of these things, it just tends to overwhelm the room. Instead, stick with one to two of your favorites and allow those to really pop instead of compete with each other. Maybe you will have less stuff in your home, but make sure it has more meaning. Over the years, my interior style has evolved and I used to love having a lot of decor pieces that were of no real meaning to me. Over time, I've come to really embrace a minimal style with those one or two pieces that hold a lot of meaning to me. So no matter what you fill your home with, make it something that is meaningful to you. These are the tips and tricks I've been using in all the small spaces I've lived in and with the clients I've worked with. And if you're looking for any small space friendly fountains or feeders for your pet, you can click the link in the description box and use our code suitcase15 at checkout to get 15% off your order with Pet Libro. Bye.